Okay, we are about to go live on the Friendly Atheist Podcast to talk about our Eye of the Tiger video that recently went viral. Nick, yeah. are you excited? I'm very excited. Still, it's still very surreal that um, we went viral on the internet, but I'm very grateful for all the blessings that we received from God, and hopefully we can be a light toward others at the end of the day. He's got his... Uh, Boxing gold chain. He's got his Rocky necklace. Keep swinging. And they already sent us the questions and they are respectful. And so um, we can both respect each other's views. It'll be a really, really good time. And I think um, people with opposing viewpoints, it's important to sit down and have a conversation because it either strengthens what you already think or you learn something from the other side. So I'm looking forward to just growing as a person and having some fun. Thank you so much for chatting with me. Oh, no, thank you for having us on and uh, reaching uh, out, man. It's been, the whole thing's been so surreal for the two of us. <laughs> Every time I've seen videos like those, they have absolutely no sourcing for where they're coming from. And so they exist in this weird internet nether region. And so the fact that we were able to figure out where it was coming from, it's like, yeah. okay, I'm I want to ask you questions about that. Somebody added two for Christ, which it was on my Lift with Christ YouTube channel. And then yeah. somebody put Christian version and they spelled Christian wrong. <laughs> so we got and a lot you, of flack for that. And it's like, we didn't even put that. Yeah, that was somebody else. So if you you go on my YouTube or TikTok, okay, that is that is what that's the original post. And then somebody added that lettering. And I was like, I already look like enough of a doofus <laughs> as it is. At least throw me a bone and spell Christian right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, yeah, more of him, less of us. That's yeah. Exactly right. But yeah, no, we got married Valentine's Day this year. Yeah. Um, the video I was talking you earlier. The video looked gorgeous. Oh, uh, thank you so oh, much. Oh, the I wedding video. It. Oh, I, I was proud of it because um, I, I didn't get it all edited together by the editor. I had to do it myself with all these clips, and so um, use some of our music, some of my uncle Gray's music in the beginning and stuff, and so I was proud of how it came out too. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, good for you. That looked nice. Was that a was that planned for Valentine's Day? Or was it a COVID postponed wedding? You know, we we wanted to get married the year before, but um, yeah. it wasn't too long because we want to get married in November. It wasn't too long to wait till Valentine's Day. So yeah, we moved. We uh, were in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and we wanted to move to Ohio we wanted to be married and she had a big thing going on in February so it just worked out for Valentine's right. Day so, so I'm from Oklahoma he's from Akron and we moved to Akron where we are now when was your video posted on your yeah channel? you know it you was to... posted months okay. later yeah so we posted two videos one uh we did one in August and that was the the event and I think we posted the live video or uh, shortly after we yeah it was a full-length concert so I start I did like 45 minutes of music, and then he spoke for, I don't know how long, 20 minutes or something like that. Yeah. And then I came up and ended it with a song. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of comments about me wearing the Joseph Technicolor coat of many colors. And I was like, well, I just sang the Dolly Parton's coat of many colors a couple songs before, and I decided to leave the um, leave it on. And so, and then with the outfit, the country outfit and stuff, I know because it had a cross behind, people are like, oh, why is she wearing that outfit? But it's like, well, this is what I, well, I wear. I work at the Amish Country Theater, and that's the outfit I wear there. So I was like, I'll just wear it here because I'll give them a mix of what I, what they, what they could get at the Amish Country Theater, and then a little bit of Christian, but it became a very confused thing, and people thought it was a church service that we were leading worship at. <laughs> They're like, what's worship come to? It's like, this is just an entertainment event, so yeah. it's just supposed to be fun. He's not a rapper at all, or he, and he can't sing, yeah. so we thought, wouldn't it be fun to do one song together, and we both love Rocky, mm -hmm. so you can tell he's got the Rocky necklace, yeah. and um, so we chose Eye of the Tiger, because that's like the theme song, so... Yeah, to give you a little bit more context, um, it was a Wednesday evening, so it was an event where it's supposed to be like a family-friendly uh, Christian entertainment night. Like she sang even some like Karen Carpenter songs. She sang like yeah. some I do a tribute for Karen Carpenter as well. And Got it. Got it. and with the event, with we had an hour and a half to fill, and That's I want two of you. yeah, well, I think it was like ten dollars on Eventbrite. People could pay a ticket to come, and with yeah. people paying money, I was like, you know, I want to do something other than speak. <laughs> Okay, and you guys said, I'm a massive John Cena fan. Like, I love John Cena. WWE, I guess. Yeah, I've been to WrestleMania four times. I'm going to LA this year. Okay, so I'm legit. And uh, uh, John Cena did his Doctor of Thugonomics, you know, when he came out and did the rapping. So I was like, I was like, you know, because I, I don't take myself too serious, you know. I was like, Haley, let's do like a Christian rap since it's like a Christian entertainment thing. 
And if you like, I'm not taking myself seriously when I do this. It will just like, just give me a few lines to say, just so I can technically say I did rapping. And that's part of the reason what inspired me to go into the crowd and start high fiving people because I didn't want to stand there and just awkwardly, yeah, because he's you know, like not sitting dancing. with me, so he's like, what do I do? You know, and he's got so much energy, um, and so he goes out there and you know he, he throws a t-shirt. We didn't have a, um, a t-shirt cannon, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> didn't make it very far. But the thing is, all those little things like were helped the video go more viral. So I'm like looking back. I probably wouldn't have changed too much yeah. about it. Um, but going yeah, forward, if you do the song again, you'd probably do it a little differently. Yeah. Little things that you would have, I mean, you're a theater person then too, or musical person. Like, well, he likes it. He, he can appreciate it. And he's um, he is theatrical in his personality. I actually have done a lot of theater. Not a lot, but like somewhat. I was in Branson uh, doing some of the shows and stuff. But uh, so we, we have similar. Exactly. And you totally understand, like, because I did it too, uh, I did acting, I coach it now. Oh. Like when all those little things happen, like they're hilarious to talk about backstage. Yeah. But it's when those little things go viral, like you can't control that. It mm -hmm. wasn't on purpose and no one ever knows the explanation. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was funny. So, yeah, so when it started to go viral, December 28th, because I was asking Haley, I was like, because of that hour and a half of that, nobody's going to watch the whole thing, right? And um, I was like, I just want to post the Eye of the Tiger video on my YouTube, just because yeah. it's like, because it was for me, like, obviously with the speaking, you know, this, I love doing it. It's my passion. But I wanted to see if I could add some different elements to it, you know, so I could become a little bit more well-rounded. So if, if you're having yeah. Lift with Christ, come to one of your events. You know, because I used to have an addiction past, so I talk about my addiction a lot. You know, so I just I just wanted to step out of my comfort comfort zone, try something a little different. You know, and uh, we posted it. It just took off, and it was like the funniest thing to the two of us. You know, because I mean, obviously, like we we how do I would put it? We weren't really taking like we took it serious. You know, but we really like it was not like I know I'm the best rapper we in the whole like, world. We like, like I'm like, not like so that. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> we were just kind of like it might be kind of fun. And and you know what's funny is that he basically got the nickname from the commenters Vanilla Christ after Vanilla Ice. <laughs> and so um, you know you can call him as a nickname now, I guess. I'm trying to figure out what is the show. Like, is it singing from one person and then? The, the testimonial is it something else is that or yeah usually we i mean we usually don't do um anything together recently for christmas um he talked about mary being pregnant and then he asked all the women in the room uh who's all who's been pregnant what are your pregnancy stories and then i came up and talked well i'm pregnant right now so uh, we talked about that and what i'm going through and what kind of food aversions i have what kind of sickness i might have or whatever and he kind of related it to you know being pregnant with a, a message or whatever but that was but that's the most we are involved together, which is why like, he thought doing a song would be fun. But yeah, basically I just do a big chunk of music and then he does um, 20 or 30 minutes of speaking and then I'll end out with, with a few songs. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. No, that makes sense. I get that. Um, some of the questions I was trying to figure out, like when you say, uh, Nick, you said you posted that clip on your channel and that started taking off. Yes. Like, what does that mean for you? Not like a view count I mean, but like, what did you notice that people were doing or saying that's different you know so i'm gonna be honest i uh, i don't know i just kind of we slowly noticed the views going up yeah and then i think the here. views that we only have like thirty thousand views correct on yeah. our on our youtube but um brody wellmaker also posted it and he got yes. two million views on that and, and a lot like, like three million kinds. now oh well and he posted that where he, on his Instagram. Yeah, he said something about when church becomes a show or something like when worship becomes a mm -hmm. rock sh concert. I forget what it is, but it was funny. It was a short 15-second clip or something, uh, and that got a lot of traction. So that's probably the most viewed that I've seen so far. Yeah. Uh, the, no, no. We, we don't know. Him, and um, then Pastor Humor also posted it, and they have like f half a million views or something. So. Um, is Brody a... Is he someone making oh, fun of you? Like, I, he's, he's definitely someone making fun of No, he's fun making fun us. in general. I don't think... He's probably not a Christian. I, I don't know. Yeah, no, he's definitely... He's a uh, Brody Wellmaker. He has like 3.7 yeah. million followers on Brody Instagram. Brody underscore Wellmaker. And his, his video has over 3,000. And there was somebody on TikTok that shared it. Um, and yeah, I, I think, his name is Del Betcher. And he said, um, 100 TikTok bucks if you can make it through the, through the whole thing which made some people watch all the way through. And then we had like 20 or 30 reaction videos to it. Yeah. 
And so that was kind of cool. I was like, exposure is exposure. What's so. that guy's name? Del what? Uh, uh, well maker. No, w no, 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 no. Bro, oh, there's one. On TikTok. Yeah, on TikTok, it's D-E-L-B-E-C-H-E-R. And it's got an underscore, I think, before the whole name. I got you. I'll check that out later if I can find those. Um, I will say, I did see a whole bunch of Christians, mostly Christians, I think, mm -hmm. responding and saying, I do get where the mocking is coming from, but also, listen... Compared to other stuff, this is not that bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, because this is not me trying to suck up to you. Like, Haley, your voice is great. Nick, your rapping was fine. And it was like, you were, I, maybe this is the acting thing. It wasn't that you thought you were great. It's that you were 100% into it. And that made it more interesting to watch. Yeah. <laughs> and it would have been way worse if you either didn't have the talent or the looks to go with it. Or you genuinely thought it was, this is the greatest thing I've ever done. Like, no, it didn't strike me like that at all. Like, mm -hmm. you did it with the right amount of enthusiasm. <laughs> um, but that's also what makes it kind of fun to watch and sit through. It's like, these people are very much into this thing. Yeah, I think the fact that it looked like we were trying so hard, and just the whole running off the stage, and then the t-shirt throw, I think... The and, the, and the audience being older too, we knew they would be an older audience. We were like, it was a small, it was a small town, um, Wintersville, Ohio, and they don't have a lot going through there, but they do have a nice um, entertainment hall. So we were like, hey, why not just do it as if we're already big and famous, and why not make them be like, oh, this is so cool, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. There's a lot of people that are like, well, that was awesome at the end. So it, even though with older people. They don't always show their appreciation until the end of the song, right? Sure, and so um, I've just noticed that a lot. My sister and I have sung together for about 10 years, and we've gone to a lot of churches and Baptist, Methodist, and all different kinds. And so, um, but people actually do appreciate it more than uh, it might look. So mm. I'm comfortable with them. I don't have to feel like I um, need to do too much energy myself. He's got more energy than I do. Sometimes I have more energy than him. Off stage, I think I have more energy. <laughs> I'm always running around. He's like, I think you're doing like carpenter or dolly parton songs like, uh-huh oh, yeah that would fit that would be fine right i'm a yeah. little bit of old soul for sure he's like athletic and i'm like vintage and so um we we try to yeah. um sometimes level it if we can yeah. i literally have a full album of christian rewrites so you can call them parodies but they're not actually funny they're just repurposed for christianity like starry starry night by don mclean i have that i agree with the whole song to be about creation for instance. So there's my question for you. When you hear something like that, um, what does that do for you? Is that something you like listening to because you know what it takes to make something like that? Or do you see it as cheesy or what? What's your reaction to those types of songs? Um, I don't hear a lot of songs. One, one song that comes to mind is the Christian version of Hallelujah. Even though Hallelujah would, you know, I heard those secret chord, David played and please. It has some of the Christian references, but somebody like changed it all to be a Christmas song. And I wasn't too big about that. Um, I think they generally they are cheesy. And um, I, the tiger, I think it's got some good lyrics and some that could be, I, I could, I definitely, we watched the video and we kind of cringe ourselves a little bit <laughs> watching it. So like that one's a little hit or miss, but if you heard Starry Starry Night, I think you uh, would think it's actually legit. Like I, I've been asked to sing that so many times. It's like one song that I, when I go to churches, I sing almost every single time. And it, um, you know, our sort of booking agent friend guy, he's always, he always requests it. And uh, my mom's like, I cried to that song. So, um, you know, I have some other songs a little bit like that. That's probably my best one. But, and I actually did that one in the full length concert. If you look up the two for Christ, I don't know if you saw it or not, but I also have a Folsom prison blues and we go from Folsom prison to wholesome living, you know, so some of them are kind of cute, funny, and some are more serious. Um, but I have always enjoyed changing lyrics to songs. Even if it's like a, um, like people say respect the classics, I respect the classics if they're perfect, right? <laughs> so that sounds like hypocritical for me to say because I don't write all perfect stuff. But um, I like taking a song and just even changing a few words or if, if there's a cuss word, for instance, I if, I if the song is great, I'll like take the cuss word out or like just change one line or um, just, uh, I'm an editor. So my sister and I have done, um, we've probably written two or 300 songs over, over the years. And I'm like, she'll start, start a song and I'll help form it, um, to where I think it's like really listenable and ready to go or whatever. So that's kind of what I've always liked doing. People are already familiar with the song and then you can 
what bring religion into it. You can, uh, they're already kind of, I mean, if you're saying a brand new yeah. song from scratch and did your own thing, it's really hard for people to get into it, maybe. But if you're starting from like some common place, maybe it's a little easier. Yeah, it's know. it's just the concept of something old, something new. And um, people do, I think, connect to what they already know. We have a lot of Christian original songs, and I do those a lot as well at, at our concerts. Um, but I like to mix in what they know and what they don't know. And um, I think people often like the originals as much as the rewrites. Um, but it kind of depends. I, I recently did a song, uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I changed the whole song to be about Joseph. I put Joseph as in father and talked about um, Mary telling him that she's pregnant and all that kind of stuff. And that was a crowd favorite at my recent um, car uh, car Carpenter's Christmas show. And so, like, I don't know. I like to have fun with it and be serious with it, depending on what song it is. So It's hard to read comments, but I'm wondering if you have any reaction to people who are commenting and, like, either just mocking it or it's the internet straight up saying mean stuff like what was what is your reaction to that yeah so for me um i grew up as a referee uh so oh, i yeah, eight years referee yeah i have my officiating license so i'm used to list, like dude you ref a fourth grade basketball game dude there's parents they'll jump from the stands and clothesline you you know like i so i'm used to having to deal with people's emotions and for me i'm honestly like really grateful Believe it or not, just seeing uh, because my goal with ministry, I've wanted to go, you know, national with it. I've wanted to go viral with it because I'd like to travel and do work across the country, you know. Sure. So once I, because I was praying for something to break or to get big, and once this finally did, I was like, all right, you know. And honestly, I've had a, I've had a good time with it. Like going through the comments, some of them, like the we were talking about the vanilla Christ thing. You know, I got a good laugh out of it. I also, I understand people's perspectives too. They're on the internet and they want to have fun. If they make a joke that they think yeah, is funny. Yeah, they get a lot of likes on their um, super, like, cool comments and stuff. So yeah. we understand. So, you know, thing. I understand uh, where people are coming from. And for me, like, if I don't know somebody personally, I don't take whatever they're saying personally. And like I said, it's the internet. Like, I've seen, uh, if you look at any big YouTuber, they're all called cringe or they're polarizing in some type of way. And I'm just... Right. You know, I think it's really cool to do something that grab people's attention, whether one way or another, because not everyone is going to like everything that you do in life. You know, so I just think like if you have, you have to have thick skin and, uh, you know, just, just roll with things, you know. So but at the end of the day, like I'm, I'm, I'd am i rather this experience happen than not happen, you know. Yeah. And for me, um, my sister and I did had a viral song already called Vote, um, Keep America Great, Vote Trump 2020. Um, and that well, got like a million views. It got 30 million views, our live version of it on Twitter, posted by um, Cal Perry from MSNBC, I think. Um, but we had all kinds of personal attacks on that. And so... Was that a original song uh -huh. that was meant to be uh, serious? Or was it also a... Like supposed to be a different type of song. No, no, we're like we're big, we're big Trump supporters. So we, um, okay. you know, and so for 2016, we didn't really know who he was. Um, but when he, yeah. the first four years, I was like, wow, we agree with like everything he did. And so um, we were like, okay, well, we want him to win again. Um, and that's a whole different uh, conversation. So but the, so when the MSNBC guy was sharing that. What was the context of that? Like, I mean, obviously he's different. liberal, but he his um, yeah. caption was pretty, uh, it was just literally um, people are already lining up out of BOK Center and singing Trump songs. I think that was the caption. So, um, <laughs> you know, it wasn't, it wasn't horrible. You know, Billy Eilish's brother, I think his name's like Phoebus yeah. or something. What's his name? Phineas. Yeah. Phineas. Phineas. He, he commented on it too. He was like something like tone deaf. And I forget, he said like three things, tone deaf, stupid, and something. And I was like, hey, he saw it. I probably, Billy Eilish saw it too. So, but anyway, to me, um, exposure is exposure. And it's almost like y you can, you can always make a comeback even after something like bad exposure, it seems like. Taylor Swift, you know, for a long time, everyone's saying she can't sing. And, um, you know, that's a pretty personal attack for a singer. Um, but over the years, she's gotten better. And of course, she's one of the biggest artists of all time. So, you know, it's just um, people, everyone has an opinion. Everyone is entitled to their opinion, sure. too, so. Um, this is a hard thing to follow up on because things go viral on their own. I mean, you can't control them. That's the hard part about it. Like, is there any way you're trying? I, I ask this in a nice way. It sounds bad. Is there any way you're trying to capitalize on this? So, like, whatever the next thing you do, 
might take off or any like are you going to do more vanilla ice or uh, <laughs> like song parodies at the end of your performances because like now you kind of have to yeah as you know i was talking with her a little bit about this because we have an event sunday and it's like the big elephant in the room <laughs> I'm just really big on uh, taking things in stride, you know? So if an event comes up, maybe if it's a younger crowd or a youth group event, depends on the venue, who's going to be there, who's booking us, where it'll be. Like, I went to uh, Kalahari Resorts in Sandusky, Ohio. They had a youth retreat, and it was just super bomb. And it wasn't like your typical church service. They had, like, like actually, like, good Christian music with, like, a band and everything. And um, I think, like, somewhere like that, it's more appropriate you know, if you're going to do like a rock remix, you know, if you're in um, a regular church, you know, and you got uh, grandparents that are coming in for a normal church service, I think there's a time and place. Just like um, if you're going to go buy a Christian CD or a Christian album, there's a time and place to listen to that music. You know what I mean? So just taking it in stride. And, you know, at the end of the day, as long as um, her and I feel like we're doing the Lord's work and we're able to have a smile when doing it, I'm, I'm open to whatever uh, God's will is for us. Same, same thinking, Haley? Yeah, I guess. I mean, we had a thought about doing the song We Will Rock You and doing He Will Rock You, but I was like, you know what? The Eye of the Tiger is just a better song. It's on point. And so, um, you know, I was like, well, would he, be, would he just do another rap in that one? Or like, how would we do that? Maybe he could squeak out a harmony. <laughs> I don't know. So we haven't even gone over it yet, but... Yeah, yeah I do. I do. I want to ride that line where I'm not being too, because I can't sing for the life of me. And at least with rapping, I could take myself, I don't want to say I take myself serious, but it's something where it's like a little more serious than in singing. For sure. Yeah, something that's like, I, I have fun doing it, you mm -hmm. know? So um, we'll, we'll just, we'll see. Um, I, like I said, her and I are still digesting um, everything that's been going on with this. And it's just been, uh, pe just reading comments, like it's such a different, uh, so so much exposure and so much to to take in. So just learning from it, and uh, we'll see. Like depending on what what events come up, what we'll do. Looking back, I would have loved to have a tiger shawl <laughs> instead of a rainbow shawl, but you know, <laughs> maybe next time. I was actually looking at for one on Amazon, and I was like, it won't get there in enough time. So oh well. So it, your audience is generally atheist, right? Okay. Yeah, what I found actually most fascinating is that it almost seemed like the majority that saw it were atheists. Like in the comments, they're like, I, this is why I don't believe in God. Or like, we're like, well, we are the reason you don't believe in God because of a cheesy song. Okay. But anyway, um, I just okay, so thought it was cool that they were seeing it. When, when it's mostly atheists and it seems like they're just trashing it, like, does that... That's very different than going viral because it's cheesy or something. That I mean, that's got to feel personal. I feel like a lot of atheists are people that were hurt by the church. The big disconnect is that uh, the church, I think, sometimes doesn't do the best job of letting people know that you're loved. You're always loved by Jesus. And even just like, you know, if I had a child and that child left me and had wanted nothing to do with me, I would still look over that child and try and love that child, you know? I feel like even when I was looking at comments on the song, most of them were like, yeah, 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 it's about Jesus. It's the, it's a Christian song. And then they're mocking something else. As opposed to the song is hurting us or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like, it would have been a very different vibe if it was, if what you're saying now, Nick, were, were part of the lyrics. I think it would have been taken a very different way. But because yeah. the lyrics were focused on salvation and, like, yeah, I get it. It's about Christianity. It was just like, okay. I can just look at this as a, not parody, but a cover or something. I don't know what the word is for it, of a popular song or something. And, and mm -hmm. I mean that in a good way. This isn't hurting people. This is silly. And mm -hmm. it's a good silly. Like, this is what you were going for. Yeah. Hopefully getting people inspired and encouraged. Yeah. Um, I think people focus more on the details than the um, main <laughs> part of it, like, than the lyrics. Um, but in general... The gospel can be offensive because it's telling us that we are sinners and we need somebody perfect to die for our sins. And most people want to believe they are basically good and that we we don't need any help, you know. Um, but we as believers, we believe we are born into sin. And, you know, however, how, I don't know why God set it up that way, but he made it so that somebody perfect needs to die for us so that we can all go to live with him. So, um, I don't know. I think I find it beautiful. I was also raised in it. So if I was raised differently, you know, we are somewhat all a product of how we're raised. And so 
it, it was interesting to get into somebody else's mindset about it because you know were you raised atheist or like were your parents no. atheist religious but a different religion okay uh, not christianity but mm -hmm. like spent a lot of time uh writing about this stuff uh so being and being surrounded by people who were either in church or out of church mm -hmm. or left church or things like that yeah. Haley, you said you had performed at branson and stuff like can you tell me anything about like you grew up in a particular denomination or what type of church or anything sure like that? well um we went to a non-denomination church um called victory christian center now it's called victory church but um, we are charismatic, we pray in tongues and believe in healing and gifts and all that. Um, Nick grew up Catholic and, um, over time has, um, become more, um, Pentecostal, mm -hmm. you know, charismatic and stuff. So, um, but I, I led worship with my sister for about five years in my dad's church, Jubilee Christian Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And then, you know, I was in all kinds of, uh, plays, Christian plays and stuff like that growing up. And then eventually we started touring and, um, well, the first, we had two viral songs. One was for Trump. One was for Rick Santorum back in 2012. So we toured at his, going to his rally, singing before he spoke. And then we've just kind of been all around the States, um, you know, and stuff. So it, it's, it's been a good time. But anyway. Yeah. And at least for me, I'm really big on re my a relationship with God. You know, I think there's so many different denominations out there. And even, you know, atheists. I think we're all fighting for the same thing. We just want... That love and unity, truth, you know, and okay. truth, you know, we're all fighting yeah. at the end I of mean, the day. My own brother is an atheist. I have two brothers that are atheists. And so, so I, I, so I guess I, I will say that they were raised Christian, though. And so sometimes you do deviate from how you were raised. Did he have any reaction to the video? Um, he knows what we, he respects our beliefs and he knows how we were all raised. Um, he just has questions and, you know, um, so it's his own journey yeah and so what i would say at least for me i try to focus more on the meat and veggies of christianity a lot of people focus on so many of the empty calories at the end of the day uh, just accepting jesus as your lord and savior and just being letting your light shine before others and just trying to touch people's lives in a positive way and i think sometimes we lose sight of what the the main focus is you know so at least that's where i'm at like i said just having that relationship with god to help me be a better person while i'm, I'm here on earth i have so much respect the fact that you were open to, to having us too and uh, i think i wish more so more people were like us you know different beliefs just you know just being friendly with each other you know i think we get we, uh, we'd accomplish a lot more in the world you know if we were just open-minded chill smiled made a few jokes you know i have no doubt if you go through my twitter history you will not like what you find oh i'm chill man it, i do it, it's it's just tweets you know what i mean you're a nice guy with a great smile i uh, uh i don't i don't hold things personally against something i have friends who don't think the same way if i'm the smartest person in the world we'd all be screwed you know you can always learn something from anybody Oh, no, thank you for, for reaching out and uh, having us on. We're just as grateful, so thank you very much. Best of luck with the pregnancy. And thank you. I hope everything goes smoothly. Yes. Yeah, baby's due July 3rd. Hopefully it holds off a day. Okay, yeah, right? Uh, are, you, are you feeling all right right now? I am just out of my first trimester, and so now I can eat broccoli again. <laughs> For whatever reason, that's something I couldn't eat. That's one of the only things that uh, my body rejected, but now I can, so that's good. Sure. I mean, uh, hopefully you can move around during performances, too, when we're anything coming up. Right. I'll be doing a Karen Carpenter show when I'm six months pregnant, but I know with your first one, they say you don't show as much, and so we'll see. But, uh, you know, the audience already knows me, and I told them last Carpenter's concert that I was pregnant. We, we have a thing where we do Mr. Postman. Do you know that song? Oh, yes, wait a minute. So, um, that is our next viral uh, thing. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Right. He comes on, he's my Mr. Postman. We should post that. Yeah, I dress up in a full on postman outfit, okay? Yeah. And I actually dance, like, I'll do a shibby, like, in a full postman outfit. And I actually. People are like, is he a real postman? It's like, come on, does he look like that? He's got the what stickers we... as, as the. I know, we should have a. So, wait, hold on. We got engaged to that song when I was doing a Carpenter show. Um, he, at the very end, he said, Mr. Postman has a package that he forgot or whatever and then you pulled out a ring so that's how he got engaged <laughs> september 4th 2020 yeah 2021 is what it was then um the second time around one of the second one of the other i've done so many carpenter shows but then i was like by the way we are expecting a package you know so now there's always a package you know somewhere so i don't know if you have like the alexa amazon thing or anything uh no we can get it though um that if you ever tell it to do like rockabye lullabies or something, it's basically lullaby music, but oh. top 40 songs. I you know what's funny? I have a sound, you know what SoundCloud is? Yeah. Okay, so I have a SoundCloud where I put all my recordings. I have a mix of, you know, musicals, Disney, slow jazz, smooth jazz. 
I did a song called La La Lou from Lady and the Tramp. It's the one that the mother is in a rocking chair and she's singing the song to her baby, La La Lou, La La Lou. And this song has like a hundred thousand hits or more or something like, maybe a lot more than that, I don't know. But it's like my number one. My other ones are, can be in the thousands, but not like that high. And I have a feeling that some people are listening to it every night. <laughs> it's like, oh, there's so many different countries that are listening to this song. And I'm like, it's just a lullaby. It's not even a famous song. So I think that people need to hear mellow, soft music, you know? So I like the Nora Jones stuff. I have a lot of that kind of stuff on my channel if you ever want to check it out. But... Oh, yeah, yeah, I definitely should. Send her Haley Gaglione. Gaglione is a little hard to spell. G-A-G-L-I-O-N-E. It actually has lion in the, it's gag, lion, and then with an E at the end. So, yeah. But everything for him is under uh, Lift With Christ, and everything under me is um, Haley Gaglione. And then together we got, of course, Two For Christ, but it's T-W-O, for Christ.org and livewithchrist.org. Also, I'm surprised, because I know you you struggled to find us, because I know when you got tagged, you're like, oh, here's the guy. Um, yeah, because I didn't see the, the captions or the credits yeah. at the beginning or end. Whatever clip I saw, I didn't have. Yeah, so, I was real no. confused as to why I wasn't being tagged. Well, um, I, I think it's because it, they're making fun, so they don't want you to really know about it, because why do they want no, to? No, they 100% would have tagged you for exactly that reason. By and large, everyone who was sharing it that I saw was just like, we have no idea who they are or where it's coming from. Yeah, I was upset about that. I was like, you know, if you're going to dog me, I'm cold with it, but at least hit the at and hit me, <laughs> hit me with it, you know? The pastor humor did. He asked him, can you tag yeah. me? And they did, so that was cool. But I think Brody's too big. <laughs> too big to see our messages. We'll, we'll fix that. So hopefully, oh, they, cool. Or something, we can, hopefully they'll find out what I thought was interesting is he put no hashtags. He just put the word cringe and no hashtags, and it got 2 million views. I guess his following three was... 3 million. He's at 3 million, million now. But if they're, of course, sharing it, then that would totally make sense. Yep, and if you share it with... If, if people with no followers start sharing it, eventually someone with a gazillion followers will see it. Uh-huh. And then they share it, and then boom, it explodes. Sure, yeah. I see, yeah. So this has been really cool. Thank you both so much. I really yeah. appreciate it. And I'll, I'll keep you updated when... Uh, can do anything with all right. All right, blessings to you, my friend. See you later. See all right, you. take care. Thanks again.